Hi, this is Ben with Fiddler Shop. And Mike. And uh, today we're going to be going over eight things you want to look for when purchasing a violin. This applies to both new and used instruments. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. So, the first thing you want to look for is you want to inspect the instrument for cracks. Uh, easy way to spot that is you want to look around the instrument. You want to look where some of the grains just, just doesn't look right. We actually have a violin here that we received and it looks fine at first, but if you look towards the end here, you'll notice there is a huge crack right there. Now, this is something that can be fixed, but when purchasing a used instrument, you wanna make sure that it has been fixed properly. Uh, what some places will do to try to hide this is they'll put a little bit of varnish over it to try to cover it up. And make it look like antique make it look like empty. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as it was fixed and that's something that you want to inspect. Uh, usually the shop will know about this damage and they'll be able to see whether or not it was fixed properly. The second thing you can look for is the fingerboard. And there are two easy things that you can look at. One would be to look down from the scroll alongside the fingerboard and you'll see if there are any bumps or curves in it. You want it to be nice and smooth Flat. And the second thing to look for would be that it has this type of curve in it. It's going to be very slight. It's a convex curve. If it's curved this way in any way, that is incorrect and it has either warped or it was badly made. Third thing to look for, uh, we're going to go back to cracks for a little bit, is you want to make sure that the scroll isn't broken. Uh, areas to look for is right here along the scroll. When a violin takes a fall, the first place it usually breaks is on that area. So you wanna inspect here to see if that's been damaged. The other area is you actually wanna look between the pegs to inspect for cracks. Sometimes they'll be filled and repaired and that's okay, but you just wanna make sure that it's structurally sound. The fourth thing we would want you to look at would be just keep an eye out underneath the tailpiece. A lot of mistakes that players make is when they remove their strings, when they change the strings, or tune it, the bridge could fall down. Or, you know, someone could drop the violin easily, having the bridge fall down, and what happens is the tailpiece hits the top of the violin. So you definitely want to have a good look underneath the tailpiece to make sure there are no scratches or hidden marks that they, um, they removed there. You might even see some open wood but that's a very known place to see some scratches or damages to your violin. All right, uh, fifth thing you actually want to inspect is the bridge itself. I'm actually gonna use the violin Michael was using here. Now, a properly set bridge will look like this. What'll happen is this side of the bridge that is going towards the scroll of the instrument will have a tilt ever so slightly back and the back part of the bridge, which goes towards the back of the instrument, will be completely level with the top of the instrument. So, when the bridge is in the proper place, you can also inspect the feet of the bridge and make sure that you don't see any open space on the bottom of the feet. You wanna make sure that the feet are in full contact with the body of the instrument. Yep. Now an easy thing to look for would be how tight the greens are on the top of the violin. Generally speaking, tighter greens means a higher quality wood that the tree lived for more years before it was cut down. But we've seen with some benchmade instruments that the wood grains are actually wider on purpose, giving them a more soft and open sound. If done correctly and matched and paired correctly with the side and back woods, it could actually give you a really beautiful sound, but uh, a nice rule of thumb would be that wider grains on any cheaper instruments that are not bench made, that aren't five, ten thousand dollars or more, means it's a cheaper wood. Uh, seventh thing you want to inspect is the overall finish itself. So just upon grabbing the instrument, you can kind of give it a once over, just look it over. Make sure you don't see any haze in the finish. 
uh, first areas where you tend to see this is, especially if it's a used instrument or an older instrument, you'll notice a haze in the finish around this area of the violin. Because that's where your palm rests whenever you're playing up on the fingerboard. So you'll notice a haze there. Sometimes that can be fixed with finish work to make it look like it never happened. Another area you want to look is around the back here. What will happen sometimes is when somebody's not playing their instrument, they tend to rest it on a table, and that's where the violin will sit. And if it's a table that isn't clean, a lot of contaminants, dust, dirt, things like that will dig into the finish. So you want to inspect for scratches on that area. All right. And the eighth point and the last thing we will mention will be that if you have a possibility to remove the strings, the tailpiece, maybe even the chin rest. Sometimes you can remove the tailpiece without taking the chin rest off. Take this end button out here. You can actually look into the hole of the violin from the bottom and it will very much resemble uh, walls, ceiling, sorry, floor, walls, ceiling, and you'll have floorboards and crown molding. And you want to make sure that the floorboards and crown molding are even Nicely made, no, no frame is happening. And then there's no uh, empty space or uh, pockets of air in between the woods and that they're all matching up and framing up nicely. Just like you would see in a house with the floorboards and the crown molding. So that's pretty much all you want to look for. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at luthier at and we'll consider them for a future video.